give you a brief run through for making your personal project now that you've completed lessons one through four. First, open up Adobe After Effects. And once it does open, make sure to close your welcome screen. I'm going to go to the project panel and import some files that we need. Most of them are already in your raw footage folder or your land school folder. I'm going to add the explosive glass and the explosive rocky files. I'm also going to import the I'm going to use Tino Fall. You'll use your own video clip of yourself falling. I'm going to then grab the grunge layer as well as our explosion with green screen. Let me find where I put that. not sure I'll use my regular one you'll have to use your explosion with green screen footage uh, my regular explosion works here don't forget when I put the explosion in your your explosion will have to have the green screen taken out by adding key light quickly to it and using the eyedropper to get rid of what you don't want I'm also sending you in your land school folder a picture of a warehouse that will be very useful for the background after the explosion has happened all right, so we've got two sound effects. We're going to use them both. We have the explosion, we have the video footage, the warehouse image, and the brick wall. Using the video footage, let's make a new comp. It makes a comp at this point. Um, I'm going to do this very quickly because you should already know the program. I'm just giving you a quick idea of how you'll build yours. After adding uh, Tino, I'm going to add the brick wall. I'm going to now key screen out everything that is not needed by using the pen tool first and start outside quickly make all my marks you'll do the same thing with your footage to get rid of everything that's on the back side or outside of your green screened image now we can take Tino and add a effect called key light. I'm going to take key light. The, taking the darker when uneven screens exist is a better idea. If I solo Tino and turn on my layer or my uh, transparency grid, I can see how much needs to be cleaned up. And about 117. I'm going to add a little bit more black back in. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm all set with how Tino looks. I think we need to uh, change his size, so scale him up. I'm also going to unsolo the layer. I'm going to position him over and make him a little bit bigger. And then adjust it so when he walks on screen it's clean. The bricks are way too large for this image, so I'll scale. So I can have some relative proportion. It's pretty good. All right. So at this point, we're ready to add the explosion by adding a shatter effect first. I'm going to go to the effect shatter. And you'll learn something new here with shattering, how to set when the shatter starts. I'm going to change it to rendered so I can see. So I obviously need to get the shatter to start later. Um, I also have a problem with the size of these bricks. If you look, they're much smaller than the real bricks are. So the first thing I want to do, leaving bricks on, is I want to change the repetitions to increase the size of the actual shattering brick. And you can also change its position so it lines up with the bricks a little bit better. All right, that's closer, maybe just a bit bigger. There. Okay, so that kind of covers the bricks properly. So that helps the explosion to look more real as far as bricks coming out. Next thing I'm going to do is add some excursion, extrusion, sorry, which makes the bricks thicker, like real bricks. Gives them a 3D look. Okay, now the next problem I'm going to have is where this all occurs. So I have to change the timing at this point so I can see what's going on 
so that the timing of the explosion happens to right when Tino jumps backwards, which is right here. So to do this, you need to take care of the force radius, which is the circle that blows up. I'm going to turn the radius to zero. So now it has not blown up and will not blow up until we tell it to do so. Um, right before he begins to jump, I'm going to hit a keyframe for the radius at zero. Now to see this keyframe in the grunge, I'm going to hit the U key so I can see it. I'm going to move a few frames over, and as he begins to explode back, I'm going to start having this radius change to 0.4, which allows for the explosion to actually occur at the same time he walks out onto screen. Okay, so that part's good. We've taken care of when the explosion happens. Again, that's using a radius with some keyframes. I want to change a few other things. I'd like it to have, for physics, a little more rotation speed so that the bricks spin more. And gravity, I'm going to increase quite a bit towards 6 so that the gravity helps drop the bricks down. I'm even going to add a little more strength so that it pushes the bricks out harder. Now the size of the bricks bothers me. I think the bricks are too large, or not the size of the bricks, sorry, the hole it makes. I want to make a slightly smaller hole in the wall. To do that, I'm going to adjust the depth down just a little so that, no, that's not the depth. It is the, which controller? Direction, no. Oh, it is the depth. I'm going to increase it a little bit so that, no, that's not big enough. Uh, let's put it back to maybe that big. So adjust your depth to about 0.35 and your hole is blown but it's definitely a little smaller than it was before. Then finally I need to move this over so it matches him. So the position of, uh, of not the force but the origin. I'm going to move it over so the brick explosion happens in front of Tino. That didn't move anything. Control Z. I guess that works. Okay, so at this point, the last thing to do is add the explosion and sound effect. So I'll get the explosion itself. I'm going to add one behind the wall. I'm going to make it a lot larger. I'm going to put another explosion in front of the wall. Make it fairly large too. Not quite as large though. So now if we look at both our explosions, I should time them out to about the same place. I think the one that's inside the wall can happen a little earlier. So the reason why I put two explosions on is if you didn't have the second explosion, you wouldn't have smog and, and whatnot on this side of the wall. It would look not quite as real as you'd want it to. I think the uh, explosion should happen on both sides of the wall. Now for the sound effect, it should go in right about here. I'm going to put the explosion rocky in first and move it over. I'm also going to grab the explosion glass and put it in and move it over. You have to hit zero key to hear it. That's going to render through. Here it comes. After the rendering is over. The glass is too loud. So I'm going to open up the audio for the glass. And I'm going to drop the audio down a little bit. Let's try that. It should be... Yeah. A little, a little more real sounding. 
Um, all right, so we've got that part in. Now, after you have a hole in the wall, there should be something back there. So we're going to grab this warehouse and drop it at the very bottom and scale the warehouse up to an appropriate size. And I'm going to position it as well so that it's more open right where the explosion happened. And that gives us something in the room afterwards. For one last touch up, I'm going to actually take the, the red brick wall and I'm going to add one more effect, color correction curves, to give it not quite such a bright look. Okay, so that's pretty much it. So at this point, you're ready to learn how to export your video so that you can upload it to a site or share it with others or just view it. And hopefully now you know how you'll make your actual explosion scene look. One last thing I'm going to do is have you go and watch the export video so you learn how to export a file so that you can then do something with your file.